Okay, welcome everybody to uh, our Scotch Malt Whiskey Society of Marsh Eltern. Uh, my name is Evan, with me is Harmony uh, from Kensington Wine Market. Uh, it's just Harmony and I tonight, I believe. Uh, I don't think Kelly or Rob are going to make it. Uh, Andrew's uh, totally tired because of all the renos that he's been spearheading at the store. Uh, I was nice enough to uh, schedule myself for a day off so I didn't have to deal with any of that. Uh, <laughs> but it means I'm uh, nice and fresh for all you guys. Uh, so we will get started uh, in just a moment here uh, with the tasting. Hopefully you guys saw the PDF file that was uh, linked, which actually correctly linked this time in the uh, tasting email. Uh, the link has just been put in the chat again as well. But just for a refresher on the order, if you haven't looked at that uh, uh, Outturn PDF file, uh, we are starting with Hazelnut Bubblegum at number one. Pretty Wacky will be number two. Sandalwood Olive Press will be number three. Old School with a Twist is number four. Marmalade Matured Cognac is number five. Number six will be For Pete's Sake. And number seven will be Fortune Favors the Brave. So as we typically do, uh, we will do our uh, sort of lightning round where we taste through everything blind at the start here. And then from there, uh, we will start uh, or we will go back through the whole lineup again uh, and reveal all when it comes to the bottles, uh, where they come from, how old they are, and how much that favorite bottle that you found uh, is going to cost you. We do have all the bottles available uh, tonight. I'll put them live uh, during the, uh, the reveal at the, near the end of the tasting there. And then uh, for anybody that wants to order, they're welcome to do so on our website after that. We do have uh, a few bottles in the lineup that will be uh, limited to one per customer, and those are noted on the website as well. But uh, with that being said, uh, hopefully it's not any, well, hopefully we do have some first timers in here. We'll see. I know we have uh, somebody in who just moved from uh, Calgary to Winnipeg and has been able to join us. So that's very cool. Uh, welcome, Michael. I'm glad we uh, were able to get you a kit and you were able to get it home safely. And uh, yeah, let's uh, let's start off with whiskey number one, which is hazelnut bubble gum. So hazelnut bubble gum. Uh, all we know so far, if you have the PDF file in front of you, is that this is from First Bill X Bourbon Barrels. That is plural. Uh, the date is 17th of February. 1128 bottles from the Oturn, so definitely a few casks in this one. Uh, put together in a batch, but it is still a single malt and it is from one single distillery. 55.6% uh, alcohol on this guy. Yeah, we're happy to have you back, Mike. Uh, glad you could join us on this one. So nose right away is, is super fresh on this guy on hazelnut bubble gum for me. Definitely see the bubble gummy notes and some banana notes uh, right off the hop, right on the nose. What do you get there, Harmony? Uh, just lots of apples and butterscotch. Um, yeah, butterscotch. Good call. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you definitely get, like, even on the nose, there's a, a little nuttiness there. Uh, had mm -hmm. it not been called hazelnut, it probably wouldn't have been able to figure out what exactly it was. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, I'm guessing they're referring to Nutella with the, the hazelnut spread. While you're chewing bubble gum, doesn't yeah. doesn't sound yeah. like you the time. <laughs> yeah, the society notes mentioned bars of nougat, flaked almonds, and sweet peanuts. Does have sort of almost like a beer nut note on the the nose for me, like the the pralines and and like really toffee laden uh, uh, nuts that you can get. Yeah, there's also like um, a little bit of like tannins on here. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if it's not, like maybe Some it's wood, wood tannins or tea mm -hmm. or something. Um, it does have a bit of a like a chamomile note now that you yeah. say it. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of this chamomile grappa I had a long cool. time ago. Yeah, that sounds good. It was really good. I ordered yeah. a case. Nobody ever bought it. Uh, <laughs> and I would pour it for people. And it just didn't seem to be for anyone but me. But I really enjoyed it. <laughs> nice. I was just doing a check when uh, we mentioned tea because our, our uh, tea fact checker, Jeff Serge, isn't with us tonight. It doesn't look like. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. A little bit of uh, 
a little bit of sunflower seeds on the nose right now for me. Like you've just uh, roasted them with a bit of salt. Interesting. Mm. 55.6% alcohol and super approachable on the palate. Like not a whole lot of rough edges in there at all. Maybe because this is more than one cask, a batch of casks put together. Uh, Might have been rounded out a little bit. Still a cask strength though. It's it's quite oily. Yeah, it does yeah. have a really nice oiliness to it. Yeah, it's uh, really Jen, nice. Jen says, ha, better tasting than I expected based on the name. Uh, Chris, uh, definite woody notes on the nose for me. Yeah. Yeah, and even after uh, having a taste of it, the, the wood note still comes out on the nose, I, I would say, even a bit more. Yeah. It's kind of peppery and, and has like a little bit of spice to it. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I don't, I'm not sure. It's, it's, there's a spice I can't put. It's not necessarily pepper like black pepper um but there's like a peppery spiciness there with water that there's that pepperiness there's almost a touch of uh oh what am i thinking of uh a touch of tex-mex uh on it even where it's uh i when i worked at the patrolling club and this is uh as, as a bartender before you worked there, Harmony, but um, at one point we had uh, a, a contest uh, to see who could make a, the best Caesar. And uh, my Caesar was utterly atrocious because I've never been a Caesar fan. Okay. However, I did make a really good uh, seasoning for the, instead of a salt for the rim uh, or cel a celery salt where it had a Tex-Mex seasoning to it uh, okay. and a little bit of lemon pepper and it worked really well. Oh, very cool. You know, mm -hmm. lemon pepper could actually fit this as a tasting note. Yeah. That's a good, yeah. Yeah, you could see how, like, just that 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 touch of, of citrus is in there now. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm thinking of it. Yeah. The lemon note does come out, <clears throat> pardon me, a bit more on the palate with water, I find, too. I don't know if you tried it with water or not, but... Uh, Takes the water quite nicely. It gets a little bit softer on the palate, but the flavor is still there. Uh, the camel meal notes and more vanilla come out on the palate as well. Oh, it, it, it also becomes a little bit darker, a little bit heavier yeah. uh, with the oak, um, almost like a bitter chocolate. Cool note. Uh, yeah. Type note. Um, uh, the Friars Bake, Friars Cocoa. Yeah. Favorite, you know. Mm -hmm. Lick the spoon accidentally thinking it was going to be sweet and it's really yeah. bitter. And then you're yeah, <laughs> coughing because it's so damn dry. Yeah. Okay, well, that's number one. Uh, save some in your glass if you can. And let's jump into number two, which is pretty wacky. That's the name for it. It's not just pretty wacky. That's the, the name as well. Um, uh, started its life in an ex-bourbon barrel. Uh, final cask was a second fill custom barrel. Uh, 25th of September for the outdoor, 186 bottles and 59.8% alcohol. At the bottom of the tasting note, it says, following X years in the next bourbon barrel, we transferred this whiskey to a second filled barrel with a number four char, 24 mm. months air seasoned oak and toasted heads. It, this nose is to me, I feel like I'm like 14 years old again. Like I'm having bubble gum and like smelly markers and nail polish. Yeah out all at the same time it does have that and it also and like bubblegum ice cream this is uh <laughs> to me it's probably because i'm still thinking of lemons from the last one but it, it's like you just squeeze lemon on a cedar's plank salmon that's just getting barbecued right now mm -hmm. it's got those big wood notes as well yeah but it's like a really fresh salmon and the salmon yeah, itself doesn't have a lot of yeah. smell yeah just yeah. tons of lemon on it and a ton of dill on top as well. Yeah. And that cedar plank just cooking away underneath it. I wish I could pin what which uh, smelly marker this is. Yeah. <laughs> but there's a bit of that chemical, like, uh, not just as a, the nail polish to me. It's just killing me. Yeah, I'm going to say it's going to be that, like, a bloom one where they, they've got that, like, they were aiming for raspberry. blueberry. Yeah, blue raspberry. 
but it it's it is that it's the 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 chemical compound that makes the smell not the uh, actual blue or raspberries exactly uh andrew mckay says uh that nail polish smell for sure mm -hmm. uh chris says reminds me of grade seven shop class class solvents and metal filings yeah it does have mm. that shop note to it metal filings is a good call as well <laughs> it, it has that almost like that that astringent smoke from spot welding in there or even soldering something uh uh on the nose for me now that you bring that up The palette's pretty cool. There's a lot going yeah. on. It's got a, a really like rich burst of flavor right up front. Um, definite fuzzy peaches and Haribo gummy bear notes, candy yeah. wise, uh, on there. But it, it's like you have a uh, uh, a burnt marshmallow uh, along with it, like the where it spent a little too long in front of the fire and got into the flames. Uh, and you got that that charred marshmallow note with it as well. Yeah, this is weird. This is like literally taking back to like 1994. Uh, yeah. I can hear the Backstreet Boys playing on my CD player. <laughs> <laughs> pretty wacky, that's for sure. It is um, pretty wacky. Yeah, Tyler Dreaver says uh, cherry cough syrup uh, or cherry cough drop, sweet with a bit of tang. Yeah, it does have that that tangy yeah. sweetness to it. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's what I'm seeing as like a, that fuzzy peach note as well, but uh, cherry cough drops totally fit the bill. Yeah, and I, for me on that exhale, it's full blown those fuzzy peaches. Mm -hmm. Or pardon me, at the inhale after the first sip is like sweet peaches yeah. and that yeah. sour sugar. Yeah, Mike Tucker says thought I was drinking Buckley's first taste. Yeah, uh, that'd be uh, this would be the lightest Buckley's I've ever seen color wise. That's, that's for sure. <laughs> it's not even op it's, it's it's transparent it's not even close to being opaque yeah and oh, it doesn't taste awful taste it doesn't taste awful and it might work <laughs> yeah oh yeah this is pretty pretty cool i just add a few drops of water just to see what that does on mine sure join you with that maybe a little bit more prickly on the nose with water It does mute the uh, that solvent note uh, with water for me, but the wood notes come to the fore. Yeah, woody, and then the citrus uh, or like the fruits kind of become mm -hmm. more citrus instead of like those melon and fruit notes. Oh well, um, the the herbo gummy bear and fuzzy peach note is still there, but it's a little bit more. It's there and gone. Like it doesn't stick. It, the, that candied sti side of things doesn't stick for as long. It's more. It still has a sweetness, but you get this like woody note that comes through as well. Oh yeah. Still a nice spice. Um, that is a super intriguing dram. Yeah, I I think I like it more at cast strength. Like the the finish mm -hmm. seemed to be a little bit more playful, a little bit more bright, and with water, it just um, it. It's there and then it gets washed away with those oak tannins that just saturate yeah. your tongue. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a good call. One point less, 59.7 is just too much water. For yeah, me. that's right. <laughs> Gotta keep it at 59.8. Mm -hmm. But I, okay. I'm very curious to know what, what time in the glass will do. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Well, we'll have to, to revisit it for sure. Mm -hmm. Let's uh Let's jump into whiskey number three, which is Sandalwood Olive Press. Uh, this guy started his life in a first fill ex bourbon barrel. Final cask was a first fill ex rye barrel. Uh, bottom says after X years in a first fill ex bourbon barrel, this was transferred to first fill ex rye. Uh, 12th of December, uh, 222 bottles from the outturn, 56.7% alcohol. And this won't spoil anything, but uh, I did get some notes from Kelly Carpenter on this bottle. It uh, doesn't say where the first fill bourbon came from, but the first fill X rye barrel was uh, uh, Michter's, which is very cool. All right. Nice citrusy oh. note again, right off the hop there. Yeah, like banana. 
like when you open your lunchbox and there's a banana yeah. in there, it's not like it's, you're eating a banana. Yeah. It's like the essence. This of isn't. It. This isn't like a, a totally brown banana either. This is still a slightly green banana on the nose for me. Mm -hmm. A little woody. Yeah, definitely for some sure. wood and, and polished wood notes in there for me. Yeah. Nose is like there's even like a touch of like linseed oil or something there. Cameron says banana, banana bread, pardon me. Maybe a touch of shoe polish there as well. Yeah, fresh cut apple smells, Andrew says. Good call. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say, again, I'd say like green apple uh, for me there. There's just something green about it. Maybe Definitely. I'm thinking of the, the green and the Michter's label on the rye. Maybe that's what's I'm, doing. It got me thinking about that uh, that artificial like green sucker with the caramel. Oh, yeah, yeah. Tyler says shoe polish is good. I went right to floor polish, but we were, I mean, we were all both thinking in the same direction. That's for sure. <laughs> mm. Oh, it's, it's spicy. That's a, and that's it a wild a little bit. It reminds me of rye a little bit. Like it really took a lot in. Um, it, it, you know, it reminds me specifically of Woody Creek Rye right now, where Woody Creek Rye has that like pulling vegetables out in the garden. Like it has that sort of garden fresh green note to it on the palate. That yeah. sort of earthy, but super fresh uh, sort of vegetal note to it. Yeah. Turn up, touch beets, touch yeah. cucumber, skin. Beets and, and turnips. That's a good call. And then you get a little bit of the dill as well, like uh, yeah. fresh, fresh dill, herb. Um, yeah, even even into like uh, not a full on like uh, super, well, a bit spicy, but like a Thai basil on the nose right now. I just had Vietnamese for lunch, so uh, that, that Thai basil was coming right out for me. You definitely get like um, a little bit of chocolate too on the palate, like the darker chocolates again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's uh, I gotta say when I put the lineup together, uh, this one did not really impress me, uh, on upon first taste. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm quite enjoying it right now though. I'm gonna try a bit of water just to see what happens. Yeah, and it, for me, uh, anything that says olive makes me scared. Yeah, same thing. I don't like olives unless they're no. black olives on nachos. Yeah, I, I don't even like those. It's It's got to be pressed into oil or I'm not touching it personally. <laughs> it goes a little bit more yeasty and doughy on, on mm -hmm. the nose, like rising dough. Mm -hmm. Like a rising yeah. sort of pumpernickel bread uh, going on the rye side of things. A little bit of spiciness with the yeast there. That just estery sort of fruity yeasty note to it. Chris says the marinated olives at 118 Empire are fantastic. I'll take your word for it, Chris. You can have mine, Chris. <laughs> That's right. We'll take the whiskey. You can have the olives. Oh, with um, oh yeah, with some water, those garden notes really shine. Yeah. Uh, and they don't. That is go cool. away as quickly as without water <laughs> yeah this mm. this totally makes me think of woody creek on the the rye side and uh heaven oh. hill on the bourbon side we had an elijah craig single cast that we had selected the last one we had <clears throat> pardon me that uh had a lot of those sort of garden notes to it that were really starchy in style it, it also kind of reminds me of like it, not the sourness, just the tart mm -hmm. um, and texture and of like if you pick a, a crab apple too early mm -hmm. and you try and bite it and you get like that texture uh, of the fruit without the sourness. Um, oh, you know, that's a good one. And on the on the nose or on the nose and palate now, a um, uh, little bit of a jalapeno note and chipotle dip 
uh, on the nose right now too with water. Cool. It's got a starchiness to it uh, for mm -hmm. me um, on the palate. It does. It almost is like, like, yeah, like biting into a potato. <laughs> you get that starchiness on the tongue. Mm -hmm. Very well, cool. Yeah, that is uh, that is not what I remembered having uh, when I put the lineup together. But I'm 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 happy for that. It, it's uh, it's a pretty wild outturn actually so far for our first three, mm. going for a, a variety of different styles and flavor. Let's uh, jump into number four, which is old school with a twist. And based on the uh, look of the bottle here, it looks like we're going into pita territory already at number four. Uh, old school with a twist started his life in ex bourbon hogsheads. That's plural but it was finished in one single ex-bourbon barrel as its final cast, 245 bottles of Neotern, 61.2% alcohol. At the bottom of the society's notes, it says after X years of age, we com combine selected hogsheads from the same distillery into a variety of different casks to develop further. This is one of those casks. Oh, this is beautiful on the nose. Yeah. Yeah, there is there is that, that sort of, it, it's, it's a spicy, earthy peat based on the nose, I would say. Mm -hmm. It uh, a little bit floral. It, it definitely leans more. Uh, it's like towards like a, maybe like a Highland style. Yeah. Yeah. Off the hop, it makes me think Ardmore right away, where you got that that barley driven. Yeah. Style. But still creamy. You get like this yeah. nice roundness to it. You get like vanilla mm -hmm. and, and oranges and yeah yeah this would be like uh like liberté should do a yogurt uh with whatever this flavoring is uh <laughs> and it, it'd probably sell sell like hotcakes at least to uh us peat freaks <laughs> yeah yeah gorgeous nose spicy still earthy i'm still getting those floral notes mm -hmm. uh apple wise maybe into like a a, a more like ripened golden delicious apple in style where it's a little bit softer mm. even into baked apple notes oh oh wow spicy spicy uh nutty nutty is, is a great one mushroomy i'm gonna throw out oh, there yeah. uh going into like grilled mushrooms and and even like a good like not heavily creamy but like a lighter mushroom broth or soup mm -hmm. even some miso notes on the finish there very cool oh man tyler beat me to it uh may, tyler i didn't think i read that but maybe subliminally uh your miso soup note is what got me there uh Tyler says, wow, that's a cool palate. Miso soup is a good note from the society. I guess they have it in the tasting notes as well. Uh, the nose is a bit of a head, head fake. I totally agree. Uh, this uh, this is, has this, this not quite meatiness, but this umami note that the, the nose didn't necessarily hint to uh, for me. Yeah. Yeah, the palate really gets you. Yeah. Uh, Chris says, getting a note on the nose that reminds me of those white crumbly fire starter cubes. That's cool. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I don't think it needs it, but I'm going to try it with a bit of water. This that that spiciness and that umami note, and there's some wood in there, but it still st stays really juicy without. Yeah. I'm wondering if water is kind of going to to uh, ruin the balance that it has there. We'll see. Well, it definitely that. mutes the nose a little bit. The mushroom notes come out a bit more on the nose, I'd say. Like you're just, you've, you've got some uh, grilled mushrooms grilling in the background there. No, the, it really mutes the spiciness of, uh, of those earthy notes that I was getting earlier, though. You got a lot more fruit on the nose with some water, I'm finding. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, actually for me, it takes the water really well. 
I do prefer it without, uh, but the juiciness stays there. It brings out the spiciness and, and makes it sort of its own thing, mm -hmm. separate to everything else. Uh, has this really nice oiliness that comes out with water as well and a bit more saltiness, more of that sort of briny saline note. I feel like this is the type mm -hmm. of whiskey that could probably do with a good amount of water. Yeah. Uh, you, could, you could really take this and, and evolve it into a multiple styles of whiskeys just yeah. by adding water. At the same time, for me, I think it'd be a tough one. It'd be one of those where I pour it with the intent to add water to it. And I just ended up adding water to the empty glass afterwards because okay. it was so delicious to start with uh, that it, I, I just forgot about it along the way. But yeah, right. uh, with or without water, I, I'd uh, definitely take a dram of that. That is good stuff. Yeah, it's funny. Hey, uh, now that you say that, I would just add water to the glass. There is something about whiskey where you do that after mm -hmm. you drink it. You're like, I have to lick every drop off That's, the side uh, of this glass. I swear, like I, I drink more water at tastings doing that than I don't just because uh, uh, while well, one, I need a water at a, at a festival event like that where I, I got to gulp some down, but uh, yeah. also don't want to lose that flavor. Yeah, it, that's something that often surprises me is how many people want the water to rinse their glass, but they never drink it. That's right. And it's like, stay hydrated, drink that, rinse yeah. it, drink and it. That's, don't... A, that's a better flavored water than Gatorade is by, by right? such a degree. Like it's not even close. Okay, Man. on to uh, number five for the night. Marmalade matured cognac. This has got some crazy color. Wait. Yeah, it is. It is dark. Uh, by far the darkest whiskey of the night. Everything else is very pale in, in, in uh, comparison. So this is, again, like uh, many others in the lineup tonight, uh, Cask Finish started its life in an ex Oloroso butt. Uh, where do you go when you start with ex Oloroso? Uh, the final cask is a first fill heavy char, char number four punchin, which is a, a crazy cask to put it in after putting it in sherry. Uh, bottom it's a, of the tasting notes, it says, after spending X years in ex Oloroso, this was transferred to a hex heavily charred first fill punchin for the remainder of its maturation. So they, uh, I'm assuming, well, actually, I, I don't know. It'd be, I wonder if they charred it and then seasoned it with sherry or if it held sherry and then they charred it afterwards. I would guess that's probably what they did. Yeah. It's like a, the, uh, their own little STR of a punch. Yeah. It is, it is very woody on the nose for me right now. Yeah. And not in a bad way. Like there's still some really nice sort of date and uh, dried fruit notes in there. Mm -hmm. um, Dates all over the place right now for me. Dates Even and into, for uh, me just, um, oh shoot, what's the word? There's like a touch of like really dry over there black licorice. Just oh, very, cool. very gentle. Yeah, you're right. It does have that. Like just a, it's it's like there's a someone in the room is sucking on a Dutch licorice. Like it, yeah. you don't know who, but it's there. It's yeah. it's in the air. Yeah. Uh, that's a really nice nose. A little bit, well, actually quite a very leathery as well. Yeah. This is almost like a leather jacket after you've been uh, out around the campfire kind of thing. Okay. Cool. Uh, Jen says mincemeat tarp tart which is a great one as well yeah jen uh, also said golf shoes which was very relatable for me yeah that was I on the remember. last one i think she mentioned that one but uh, i could see it on this one too yeah it's uh, it remind me yeah. of my first pair <laughs> yeah. little bit of the green on the bottom yeah Man, that is a, a nice nose. Some really heavily steeped uh, Earl Grey tea in there as well for me. Oh yeah, good good note. Yeah, you like left the bag in too long, and you came back, yeah. and it's it's still it's a cold tea now, but it's still yeah. good. <laughs> it is, yeah, exactly. The nose is good. Uh, you're you're gonna like uh, dry out your mouth as soon as you take a sip. But uh, I wonder if this is gonna dry out the palate too. I don't know. We could prepare ourselves. Everybody start salivating, yeah. maybe. <laughs> That's right.
Wow. It's dry. Ooh. Uh, like coffee yeah. dry. <laughs> yeah. Um, licorice, as you mentioned, though, big time on the palate for me. Yeah. Like not full on into the like black, like fennel notes, but definitely that candied sort of like concentrated note of a licorice. Yeah. Maybe this is what Andrew's talking about when he says Australian black licorice. Yeah. It's like sticky licorice. Mm -hmm. um, very cool. I, you definitely get a little bit more for me, uh, like the char and like that uh, mm -hmm. matchstick note, which is something like I often don't find. I know Kurt and Andrew yeah. are sensitive to sulfur and they often say like it's not always like that that egg that bad egg smell and sulfur sometimes it's yeah. just like that, that match stick. struck match this yeah. is this is like it's not even struck match for me it's the the match after it's burnt out like it i don't yeah. get that I, I don't get any sort of prickly sulfur note on this personally but i could maybe it's there maybe uh <laughs> the heavy heavily charred punching would actually filter that out of it who knows maybe that was the the design of this was they had a really funky ex oloroso but that was sulfur heavy uh, and they they wanted to use that char to filter it, which would be uh, an interesting way to go about things. Mm -hmm. Still love the nose on this. The palate's nice, but the nose is what makes it for me. The nose is amazing. Like I could smell this for hour. I get waves of uh, yeah. dark fruit, bright fruits, melons, dark yeah. fruits again. It's even like if you've ever been, uh, I think you've actually been there, Harmony, uh, not with us, but out, outside of us. Uh, did you ever go to the uh, the cigar festival that they have at uh, uh, at the Sika Seek Nation Hotel? They held it for a few years where it was like cigars and whiskey. I know. I oh. hosted one with the Slanshava Club cool. at the Petroleum, and I was the the lighter holder. So after we drank all the whiskeys, <laughs> I had to go supervise all the smokers and light all the cigars and make sure people were using the ashtrays because we were actually nice. on a wooden deck with like a wooden floor and wooden wow. tables. So. I was, yeah, that's uh, that's playing with fire, that's for sure. Literally, yeah. And this poor guy who lent us his patio had just spent like <laughs> the entire summer building his custom yeah. cedar planked patio. And then we're like, can yeah. we have a cigar night on that? Yeah, let's season it with ash and sparks. Yeah, it yeah. never happened again. We were responsible, but just like he was petrified the whole night, which is oh, why I, I, said, I will supervise yeah. the smokers. Um but yeah, no, I Ken, thank you. It was the Rocky Mountain smoke out that I was thinking of. I need to go to this. Yeah, it, and I'm not a cigar smoker, but it that that the smell of the cigar smoke, all the different perfumed notes in the air, plus the 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 typically heavily sherried or peated whiskey that went along with it, because mm -hmm. you needed typically something big uh, to stand up to all the cigars mm -hmm. in the room, but. Uh, uh, it reminds me of being in that room at that event. That's cool. Yeah, and my uh, best memory uh, and shared experience with cigars and whiskey was at the Banff Whiskey Experience. Oh, and cool. I met up with a friend of mine uh, from Fort Mac and he brought me a Comancho cigar. And nice. we, we poured some heavy drams and sat on a patio of uh, the Chateau Hotel with a... Uh, so leather blankets around like a little nice. fire pit and was that just outside the the convention tasting itself yeah i think i i saw you and met you that year where we i'd known about you from co-op world of whiskey but we'd never met in person right yeah it was yeah. great and and he shows up and he's like i got cigars and other things but that's for later and nice. let's smoke these cigars and i i met his wife and we just all sat around and and many of us had different cigars and we're like passing around cigars but nice. never sharing the whiskey and, yeah and it was awesome and i keep bugging uh andrew hardington like when are we going to have another bamf whiskey yeah. festival <laughs> it was a pretty cool event I, I gotta say that he put on yeah um i've added a bit of water to mine just to see what it does 
does not kill the nose, which kind of surprised me. I, I'm always wary of, uh, especially wine cask and, and sherry casks, uh, especially when they're finished of adding water. But um, the leathery notes stay there. Uh, the dried fruit notes maybe take a step back a touch. The, the black tea note is there still. Yeah, I often, I don't know about you guys, but I often get a little wary of adding water to sherry. Yeah, same. The water to on this one actually uh, does not kill it. Uh, not saying it needs it, but uh, uh, a lot of the time, especially on cast finishes, I find the the, the palate gets jarring, where mm. it, it almost splits the palate in two. But this one works nicely. No, it, it to me it became a little richer on the palate, yeah. and the, the tannins kind of calmed down just a little bit. Yeah, the it's like the char remained, but the tannin went away uh, in yeah. a lot of cases. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's a that's a really wicked nice. round. Yeah, super happy with the lineup so far. Well, let's yeah, we uh, that is. <laughs> yeah, let's jump into number six, which is called for Pete's sake, and Pete is spelled like the name Pete, not P E A T. It's P E T E, uh, and uh, this is from a second fill bourbon barrel. No finish on this one. Thirteenth of May. 222 bottles for the outturn and 62% on the dot. Coming in nice and soft at 62%. Hey? That's right. Yeah. Oh, that is a soft nose versus the last one, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is so pretty. Yeah. I really like this nose. This is uh, like you've uh, accidentally uh, lit a dryer sheet on fire. Oh, that's cool. Because I was thinking, like, I just did laundry earlier, and this is yeah. like my laundry. It, it doesn't it have that like dryer sheet or fabric softener on the nose. Totally, yeah. It, it, it's I'm trying to think of the the. Uh, it's not the uh, the rain fresh one scent that you get. It's it's like the spring fresh scent. I think yeah. is, is what it yeah, is. Yeah, I just I just want to take this little guy to bed. Yeah. It's got a little bit of uh, like a pressed violet in a book uh, note to it as well. Salmon locks breakfast with tea Oh, bars. cool. Yeah, and just to squeeze a lemon over it, uh, but with the cream cheese there too. Uh, I never got into that. And uh, and an everything bagel. Uh, yes. I think I'm just putting in an order now. I'm not actually giving tasting <laughs> notes. I have the bagel and the cream cheese, but no salmon locks. <laughs> yeah, oh, salmon locks is awesome. Salmon locks like or it. smoked salmon. Love it. No, I was... Married uh, into a Jewish family for 14 years, and that was mm -hmm. standard on Sundays. I'd show up with a pack of bacon <laughs> with my own frying pan, <laughs> and just to, to just to prove that you're a heathen, like you were you were going yeah. out of your way. Yeah. Well, I remember my first invitation for breakfast. I said, "What's for breakfast?" And he tells me, and I'm like, "But where's the bacon?" He's like, <laughs> "We're Jewish." And yeah, I, I I don't know if I told you, but. Yeah, and I was like, kind of a cultural thing. But yeah. it's breakfast. Like you're having yeah. people over and you don't have bacon. I'm like, can I bring the bacon myself? And he says, yeah, you can, but you have to bring a frying pan. <laughs> and so I showed up at the door to meet his parents for the first time with bacon and a frying pan. And his dad hugged me so hard. Nice. And was like, we will never tell my father. And we ate the whole pack of bacon. That's awesome. <laughs> This is another one like the last one where I could just nose it. Uh, it's got a gorgeous nose to it. It is. It's really inviting. I can't quite put into words, but it's just very pleasant. Yeah. That 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 sort of slightly floral again. That pressed violet note just doesn't go away from me. Dusty books as well. It's like mm. hitting a really good library. Uh, Mm. And and just like scanning the bookshelves. <laughs> yeah, library is a good note. Floral, mm. it's very floral on the palette. It does remind me, like we uh, we did the thirty for thirty on the twenty eight. <laughs> yeah, how was that actually? I, I'm sorry, I missed that. You are sorry, you missed that. Yeah, <laughs> I've was, got a kit here. Well, maybe I'll have to try some later. It was really cool and. Uh, the Isla Violets 30 was the oldest Bowmore I had ever yeah. tried. So trying an actual Bowmore 30 was very cool. And it, it it immediately took me to the Isla Violets. Yeah. And 
And I was like, wow, I didn't think I would ever remember drinking a flower so memorable. Yeah. But this, this does have this a, a bit of that. Yeah. yeah. It, it's not as coastal as the Isle of Islets 33 is, no. but it does have that. Like, I wonder if that is maybe a hint towards the distillery on this one. We'll have to see. But it definitely that that violet note again, like it's it's almost like getting into uh, uh, like a violet liqueur, like it's 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 got that that creamy richness to it. Yeah, creme de violet style, yeah. which is very watered down. Um, oh, I just I was mm. updating my gorgeous I, palette. Sent me the the filing notes, and I haven't read them, so I finally caught up. All good. Um, and it says hoppy IPA. Which is super cool because cool. This, this did remind me a little bit of the experimental series as well from Glenn Fittick. Mm -hmm. um, That's a good note. I, I shamelessly remember drinking that entire bottle by myself. Um, I'm going to say this is like a more of a, this isn't like an Andrews, like, give me all the hops you can give me oily, dank IPA. This isn't West Coast. No. This is East Coast. Where yeah. it's like a little bit creamier and tropical in style. It's it's not leaning into the bitterness. It's yeah. leaning into the 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 tropical and citrusy notes. Yeah, it's very pretty. Man, uh, I said the palate was or the nose was excellent. I the palate stands up to it. That this is a nose and palate whiskey for me. Fantastic yeah. stuff. I've added a bit of water just to see what happens. Tyler says it's awkward how drinkable this is for sixty two percent. Yeah, this is. Uh, this is a, a, a bottle made to create awkward situations, I think, is I'm right there with Tyler on that one. It's, <laughs> that, it, it's like that too dangerously drinkable whiskey. Maybe that's where the for Pete's sake name comes from. It's like yeah. Pete brought this to a house party when he should have just yeah. stayed at home and drank it at 62%. Yeah. It's like, thank you for sharing, but now things are weird. Yeah. And it's not the whiskey. <laughs> so uh society's notes have a name a, a note on the name here it says when we added water it was even more perplexing and fascinating i agree on the nose i haven't tasted it with water yet but the nose does become more fascinating and perplex oh. perplexing if that's possible um Add water. but it yeah i'm i'm trying i'm going to try it with water on the palate soon here uh fascinating as we find ourselves on an emotional high magically transported back in time to the Woodstock Music Festival of August 1969 as we listened to the band Sweetwater performing for Pete's sake. Well, there was definitely a boomer in the crowd uh, doing those tasting notes on this one. <laughs> my, I don't even think my parents were born in 69. Yeah. The, yeah, the nose still works. It does go in, a little bit into like a lemon pledge note uh, on the nose for me. Uh, with water still has this like beautiful smokiness in there uh, for me it's uh, a combination of mm. like salty and chalky like uh, yeah. minerality like limestone chalky is a great note yeah palette wise man that like this is a, a head scratcher for me because uh, I think I just like it slightly more with water but man, this works so well with, uh, or without water, pardon me, but this works so well with water on the nose and palate as well. That is, uh, that's an incredible whiskey. Yeah. I can't wait to find out what it is. Yeah, me too. It's well, I know, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretending for everybody. I know. Um, I'm so blessed that I get to sit in on these because I'm not a member. Um, Every once in a while you try a whiskey and you're like, I need to be a member. Yeah. But I have a maxed out credit card due to my <laughs> habit of buying whiskey. Yeah. And at a limit, I should never have been given. Yeah, this um, is uh, Harmony. I think you're single-handedly keeping the store flow right now. Uh, I literally asked Andrew yeah. to keep my paycheck. I was yeah. like, just keep it. Don't tell Connie just to keep it. There's too many bottles on the wall that I want. And I found three in this tasting that I want. <laughs> well, we haven't even done the last one yet. Uh, okay. Before we go on, go on to whiskey number seven, I want to point out that uh, uh, Chris Walker's, uh, what he said here, if bacon flowers existed, this is what they would smell and taste like. Uh, that is a t-shirt waiting to happen, Chris. Uh, yeah, I'm taking that, that is a fantastic note. Can we put that in your app, in the, <laughs> the photo app, bacon flowers? Yeah. We we'll should. make Chris a t-shirt. Yeah. 
I owe him for my cheeky yeah. comments I made to him when he was also in the store last. just Chris. If if you ever get to name a, a society bottle, bacon flowers, I think is is all you need to do. That that is a fantastic name for a bottle. <laughs> uh, that being said, let's jump on to the seventh whiskey here, which is Fortune Favors the Brave. Uh, again, or actually this time from a first fill expert from barrel. The last one was from second fill. 7th of March, 202 bottles from the Ojern, uh, a, a slightly lower ABV at 57.8%. Cheese. Oh, man. Cheese all over the place. <laughs> this is... Uh, this is like three kinds of cheese. Well, th this isn't... So, uh, th and this is one of those notes where I got to say, but in a good way after this. Mm. This is uh, driving by a dairy farm uh, for me. This is like, uh, it's not even driving by a dairy farm. It's uh, walking past an open dairy farm barn where it is like so cheesy and, but there's there's not just cheese going on in there. It's so lactic, but it's so uh, farm driven on the nose, I would say as well. And by farm, do you mean beef? Because it smells uh, like a cheeseburger. This, this is definitely a cow byproduct, I would say that I'm smelling in here. This is cool. Yeah, it does have a burger note in there too, though as well. <laughs> there, there's a there's a there's a Big Mac with the sauce on there. Uh, totally, this is there. weird. Yeah, I haven't had a Big Mac in months. I might order one. Wow, Jen uh, is uh, linking to how to make bacon roses. <laughs> that Jen is uh, genius. That sounds like a rabbit hole for it to go down later tonight for me. Oh, they're beautiful. Yeah, uh, Andrew McKay on this one says, smelling some grass the cow is eating right now. Totally agree. Like that, it, it's like cow chewing its cud in the pasture just as it's about to go into the dairy barn to get milked. Okay, this is very a very happy cow. Yeah. Yeah, I maybe just... it's a uh, maybe it's a wagyu uh, cow <laughs> or uh, or something like that. Mm. Pardon mm. my ing ig uh, ignorance, but what's a fishmonger? Uh, it's like a cheesemonger, but they sell fish and instead of cheese. <laughs> so just like a fish salesman. Yeah. I don't know any sailors. So this is not what I expected palette-wise based on the nose. Um, still has a rustic smoky peat that was on the nose. Mm -hmm. But the palate is not cheesy as much as it is tropical for me. Very fruity, very barley driven, still creamy, but uh, mm, that is a, a cool dichotomy versus, on nose versus palate for me. Andrew says I need to go to San Francisco to see the fishmongers live and in action. So, I mean, it sounds like yeah. I need to do a uh, American uh, whiskey tour. Yeah. So I can get some culture. Well, yeah. In my uncultured life. That's, uh, I mean, there's places we could see in San Francisco for sure, but uh, I think if we're going anywhere, we got to start in Kentucky. Let's do it. We have some opportunities there. That's right. And we know some people. Well, I think the one you're talking about, I think their warehouses are in Washington, though, if I remember correctly. <laughs> Not that that's a bad thing. Mm hmm. Oh, it's yeah. very floral. It's very pretty and floral is good get that too. smoked fish on here a little bit. Yeah, floral is it like uh, dandelion wine right now on the nose with me, with the cheese there for me. Just gonna add a bit of water to that. This is gonna be tough to pick a favorite on it for me on this one. <laughs> I thought it was six until I tried seven. Mm -hmm. I thought it was five <laughs> until I tried six. Yeah, et cetera, been, et cetera. It's been a cool lineup. Mm -hmm. So uh, a few drops of water does mute a little bit of that cow funk. Uh, mm -hmm. It's still there, but not as much. It's more uh, cow leather, I'd say, than uh, than fresh cow at this, that point. Uh, the steak has gone from uh, rare to uh, charred. Uh, on the nose for me, uh, just passed uh, into like uh, fully cooked. Okay. 
and it's gone from big backs to Burger King where you got the 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 charbroiled burgers on there. Mm. Palette is still really good. It's a, definitely a lot shorter though. It's not as juicy and and big on the finish uh, with water. Uh, I think I do prefer this one with oak. Well, that was our first round through. What did you guys think of the outturn so far? Um, that was a, a super fun one for me, I gotta say. Oh yeah. Um, I don't, with water, the, the last one really changes a lot, actually. Mm -hmm. It's like a totally different whiskey. It is. It's, I, I think the nose benefits from the water if you don't like the cheesiness, mm -hmm. but the palate just isn't quite as good. The, the tropical notes just don't stick around in the same way. Yeah. And the and, floral notes go away too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any favorites it's, for you so far, uh, Harmony, out of the first round? Um, well, the flashback to 2000, uh, 1994 was kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Like seriously, I I'm in the basement. We just finished watching the Spice Girls video for like the seventh time today. We're taking a break. We're playing some Mario Kart. Uh, we went to 7-Eleven, bought some candy, some nail polish from San. Uh, yeah. So uh, just to just to double check on the Mario Kart, just to see if we're on the same wavelength here. Uh, Super Nintendo Mario Kart or Mario Kart 64? 64. 64. Oh, see, I'm I got to go with the original on that one. I didn't have a system, so I had yeah. to rely on my neighbors. So yeah, same here. Actually, I, I I played at my neighbor's place, but that was my uh, my go to was Super Mario Kart uh, on the Super Nintendo. I think when I was fifteen, my parents' friends gave us their Atari. Nice. <laughs> they had like two games, and it was terrible, and I hated it. So I just kept going to Melissa's house to play Nintendo. <laughs> Yeah, that, well, going from an Atari anything to a, a Nintendo 64 would be a big jump, that's for sure. It, yeah, it was pretty awesome. So, yeah, like uh, the Sandalwood Olive Press was pretty cool. Anything with Pete, I'm a fan of just instinctively. Um, uh, but Pretty Wacky was pretty wacky, and I can't wait to yeah. read it. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking. I haven't gone back to anything yet. I'm looking forward to going back through the the lineup again on the second round here which will start in just a second uh what about said, you do uh, you have a favorite so far i mean they're it, all awesome tough. i think i i think for pete's sake probably still edges out yeah uh and then it uh it'd be a toss-up between pretty wacky for pete's uh for pete's sake and marmalade matured cognac Mm. I, I don't know what to pick out of those ones again, so I'll have to maybe settle that on the second round through. Uh, yeah. uh, Dave Ann is saying Harmony only wanted three bottles. I'd take all seven. Nice yeah. picks. Uh, Mike Turner says three, six, and seven for him. Uh, Tyler says six, then four, and five. Uh, so quite a few sixes so far, which I totally agree with there. I'm, I'm just curious about the price because maybe this is how yeah. I cave and get a membership yeah um yeah if then, there's one of here one in here that's like below a thousand dollars that might just do it for you right that might do it <laughs> and i'm thinking i might have to place an order with uline for some like 400 500 mil empty bottles and go have these yeah some of my friends cool. out there just start building my collection but but slowly because if i start bringing home more full sealed bottles i might yeah. find myself very quickly divorced <laughs> <laughs> but the trick is if you're all if you're looking for tips though stash a few empty boxes amongst your full boxes of whiskey so you can just fill them up mm -hmm. and no one is the wiser Good call. Yeah. yeah yeah chris says divorce ain't so bad uh, i know i've done it before but i don't want to yeah. do it <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm still uh, working on survival of my first marriage and trying to just stick to that. So uh, yeah, that's um, not not yeah. encouraged. That. That's right. I'll I'll just uh, taste and then uh, drink vicariously through the rest of you. I think is the way I do things. The hazelnut bubble gum is way more bubble gum. 
Cool. Well, let's go back to it. Uh, let's uh, jump back into hazelnut bubble gum. We'll, we'll try it again and then we'll do the reveal on that one. That that hazelnut note definitely is at the four now for me. Still has a nice floral note in there as well. A little bit of juicy fruit gum on the nose right now for me as well. Yes. I've never been a hazelnut person. The nuts always break when you crack them and it's just mm -hmm. so much work. That's why you just make them a paste and call it Nutella. <laughs> I've never had Nutella. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I could pick up this blind, what this is. And I'm interested to see if anybody has any guesses. Um, we have definitely had bottles from this distillery in the society uh, uh, at the same age over the last uh, year or so. Okay, so I'm new to this, so pardon my mm -hmm. my ignorance here. Looking at the label, yeah, this is a batch, a batch style. It's not. Yeah, like so this is something that, uh, and that's a really good question. Um, what I will do here, uh, and this will give uh, everybody a little bit of an idea of what it is here is I'm going to share my screen and then we'll chat about this a bit more because uh, I have a blown up version of the uh, the label here. So let's do this. So this is the label that Harmony's talking about. Uh, this is hazelnut bubble gum. Uh, this is what they're calling a distillery 18 or pardon me distillery 19 rare release. Uh, it is 18 years old, and uh, the fancy uh, graphic on there, uh, pretty cool, actually, label. Uh, I like the, the guy blowing a bubble with this bubble gum there, and some aliens blowing bubbles with the bubble gum in the background. Um, so this is uh, a bottling done for the Highland Whiskey Festival. If you were in our outturn uh, in February, I believe it was, we had a Isla Whiskey Festival bottling from Kalila. Uh, where they did that as a batch release as well. This is what the Scotch Mall Whiskey Society is doing uh, to, in order to share some of these festival bottles more with around the world. Um, there's There's been cases in the past where it was just a single cask and uh, everybody wanted it, but nobody got it essentially because uh, it was just, there was no way to parcel it up fairly. When they do a batch like this, it allows them to uh, send it to multiple society chapters around the world, which is really cool. So this uh, is an 18 year old from Glen Geary Distillery, distillery number 19. So Glen Geary is spelled Glen space and then Geary looks like Garyock. And that's how a lot of people pronounce it. That's how I pronounced it for years and years and years until I was corrected. So uh, Glen Geary is uh, Glen and then G-A-R, uh, I O C H. Yeah. Thank you, Harmony, for uh, signing that out for me. Um, but uh, uh, Glen Geary is a bottling or a distillery we have had some from in the past uh, six to 12 months, uh, all around 18 and 19 years old. And in fact, the bottlings that we have had have been, uh, I think, both sister casks to the casks in this one. Um, both, uh, all of them had this nutty, fresh, and fresh fruit note to it. Uh, like this one has. Um, this is a really well put together dram and it's it's there's not a whole lot of rough edges to it at 55.6% alcohol thanks to the multiple casks. Um, super well put together. Uh, this one is limited to one per member uh, and it is $234.99 uh, for the bottle. Uh, I've just pasted the link in there for those that are looking for it. Um, and these are, are these are just going live now for anybody that's looking to purchase. You can put them in your cart as we're going through. Please uh, just limit it to one order instead of uh, doing an order for each bottle, though, because uh, uh, it makes our jobs easier when you're we're filing the paperwork and also keeps us from uh, uh, getting angry uh, uh, calls from yeah your service team that has to deal with the web orders about those whiskey stat whiskey people and them not knowing how to order correctly. So, or myself when I put your order in the mm -hmm. perfect size box and then I find one more bottle. Yeah, oh. that's right. <laughs> yeah, that is a uh, that one uh, stood the test of time in the glass. That's for sure. Uh, I really that's like really that one. Cool. 
I've personally always found Glenn Gary to be completely underrated. Yeah. And I've always enjoyed them. It was it was in the first 10 bottles of scotch that I ever tried, and it's always resonated. Um and I, they have some really cool history as well, which is, which is fun. Yeah. Yeah. Andrew McKay says he needs a couple more ounces to confirm how good it is. Uh, good news, Andrew, is it is a full size bottle that you can purchase, uh, and that there's plenty of ounces in that. <laughs> okay. Next up is back to pretty wacky with whiskey number two. I'm <laughs> super curious to see how this st- stood up in a glass. I want to give this to my Mormon sister who is addicted to fuzzy peaches. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, get her addicted to something else. I take it. Eh? Yeah, well, that and Coke Zero, those are her kryptonites. <laughs> well, yeah, you, you tell her she can do better if it's Coke Zero. That's it's uh, horrible. Yeah. Anytime I see her, she shows up with this like liter and a half jug of Coke Zero. Oof. And I know I'm like, you disappoint yeah. me. Yeah, she's she's Mormon, but she does wear it that still has caffeine, right? Doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's okay. They've loosened up over the years. <laughs> yeah, like Coke has or Mormonism, because uh, I wasn't aware about Mormonism loosening up. <laughs> no, they've really they're desperate, so they're loosening. Up. <laughs> <laughs> Good to hear. Good to hear. But oh man, it's so fruity. Yeah, oh, it's no. it's fuzzy peaches, but it's it's specifically the yellow lemon Haribo gummy bears now for me oh cool you know I get like a soft I know we were talking about cigars earlier but there's like a softness to that like a tobacco yeah, yeah. Or something in here for it me. also has uh speaking of softness and and uh I'm just gonna stick on the the 7-Eleven candy train here that uh because this just brings me back to being a teenager and going into 7-Eleven for the five cent candies um yeah. uh uh, root beer uh, gummies right now yes that that slight vanilla earthiness to it or even like cola gummy bottles yeah yeah, yeah. Coke bottle ones too yeah oh do you remember the one cent gumballs the sour gumballs yep i used to throw down that dollar like i was a pimp and be like a hundred one cent bubble gums please That's, i swear that uh all those like five cent candy manufacturers are just owned by dentists that that's probably the, <laughs> the biggest shareholders in any any of those candy candy concerns that would be a genius marketing boy that's me. right jimmy is isn't cool. just isn't flossing enough again we're gonna have to take all some right. teeth out and it's gonna cost you I need to know how much this bottle is because I will drink this in a couple of days. The entire bottle without remorse. Okay, well, I, I got to say that that stood up nicely. Uh, I'm still not convinced it's my second favorite. It might be my third though. Uh, that okay. is uh, that is a really cool bottle. It's dangerous. But I will share my screen. It is a dangerous ground, that's for sure. Yeah, there's a few of those in this lineup, I believe. I have a sweet tooth. I love PD savory whiskeys, but I have a kryptonite for sweetness uh, mm-hmm. built within me, and that just nails it. Okay, so the this is Scotch Malt Whiskey Society 128.19, and this is not from Scotland. This is from Wales, yes. and that means it is Penderin Distillery. An all-female is... run distillery. Very cool. Never it is an all-female run for. distillery. <laughs> And this is 11 years old, uh, and it is 220. This is the first Pendrin Scotch Malt Whiskey Society bottling we've seen since 2016. Wow. Very cool. They they honestly, they should have just named this Candy Crush. Uh, (laughs) It would have been a good name for it. Maybe that's trademark, though. Maybe they can't do that. Mm-hmm. it's very cool yeah okay yeah, up next little Sorry, tannin on the finish on that which is nice it kind of so- slowly dries out all that sweetness well and i should share the link on that one uh, for those that, that are looking for it pardon me so once again that is 128.19 and there is your link for that bottle all right Okay, next up, back to Sandalwood Olive Press. Still so garden vegetable heavy. 
Mm-hmm. A little bit of that shoe polish coming in again, though. Definitely, yeah. That those uh, sharpie and solvent notes. Yeah, this is depressing me a little bit because it's instead of like the fun times with friends and like flavored sharpies, I'm like, ah, oh, it's Sunday morning and I don't want to go to church, but my brother and dad are polishing their shoes. <laughs> And it's like, it's like a fasting Sunday, so we don't get to have breakfast. Oh, man. So here's a society, <laughs> based on your, your note there, uh, I would make this, don't call it sandalwood olive, olive press, call it polished polish shoes and polished pews is what it should be <laughs> called. Yeah. Very cool, though. Just mm. a, a grassiness in here as well, I'm finding. Even has the uh, the a little bit of the the snuffed out candle note in the background of uh, some of the churches that I've been to. Hmm. Definitely um, a, like floral on the palette. Floral, but so again, so so much like Woody Creek Rye for me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would swear that there is rye and corn in this and not that is not malt. Uh, but uh, this is uh, a malt whiskey. Uh, it's still a surprise because this is a this is a neat one and this will be limited to one per customer because this is the first time we've seen this distillery from the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society in Canada. I'm gonna share my screen here. Uh, before I do, Andrew says Harmony and the Markers were scented, not flavored. You weren't okay. supposed to eat them. Uh, Andrew, uh, to each okay. their own. Uh, you don't have to yuck anybody's yum on this. <laughs> no, I, everyone deserves to have a special childhood. Right? That's right. I, I still think Paul Shoes and Paul Pews would be a, a cool name for this. It would bottle. be a very cool name. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Michael says, liking Mike number three much better than the first time through. Uh, it holds up in the glass quite nicely, I think. Okay, here is the screen. So this is Scotch Malt Whiskey Society 150.04. Only the fourth bottle to be uh, 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 bottled, or fourth cast to be bottled from distillery number 150 by the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. This is young. This is seven years old. Uh, and look at that region. This is from Ireland. Uh, which Irish distillery could this be? And it's not Bushmills this time or Alan Bushmills is uh, distillery number 50, if I remember correctly, not 150 for the SMWS. Uh, distilled on 12th of December 2013, 181.99 is the price. And the distillery is called West Cork. Cool. So first bottling, uh, that we've seen from the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society on the side of the pond from West Cork Distillers. Uh, West Cork Distillers is in uh, the County Cork, just like, uh, if I remember correctly, actually, I should double check that, but I, based on the name, I'm, I'm pretty confident on that. Um, but that is where, or near where the Jameson slash Middleton Distillery is as well. And uh, these guys have been operating for a while. It's a, uh, I think it's a, a two brother team, if I remember correctly, that owns and operates this distillery. Um, they have been slowly distilling away since 2002, but they were uh, very much on the craft side of things in the early days. Didn't really get into full time, full blown distillation with a full size distillery till about 2017. Uh, but I think they produce in the realm of 7 million liters a year now. So uh, they are definitely not a small concern nowadays. Um, that would put them uh, sort of in the realm of that's slightly larger than uh, production wise than Kalila Distillery on Isla. Um, so uh, probably not big by Jameson standards, but uh, definitely not a small distillery either. They do triple distill. Um, but uh, they've done some interesting bottlings already. You can find West Cork Distillery bottlings out there. Um, not at cast strength, unfortunately. I think most of their stuff is bottled at 43 or 46% alcohol. Um, and uh, they've done some experiments with uh, uh, charring uh, the inside of oak barrels using peat fires. 
uh, and also using oak from a bog uh, for, for a few of their casks. Um, uh, beyond that, they triple distill and this used a style of distillation, which they don't use anymore. And for the triple distillation on this one, uh, the first distillation, they used what they called a rocket distillation, where they ran everything through the still in about 30 minutes uh, for the first first run. Uh, second run and then third run were, for, were more traditional. Um, so it definitely changes the spirit style where you get something big and meaty on that first run because it's you're 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 not really cut doing a big cut on that. It'd just be taking everything and then running it through again. But uh, it does have this really rich style to it because of it, which is really cool, and some really cool uh, notes to it as well. Uh, that was a fun one, and definitely a, a lot different versus the rest of the lineup, which is really cool as well. Okay, back to number four, uh, which is probably going to be more traditional based on the name. Number four, of course, is named Old School with a Twist. Oh, and actually, before I do that, uh, here is the link for whiskey number three, the West Cork bottling, and that is limited to one per customer. Okay, on to number four. I'm gonna give it a nose again. Man, that is so perfumed on the nose now. Yeah. And it's not even lilacs anymore. It's just... No. This is like uh, going into like uh, uh, old lady getting a perm at the, at the hairdressers <laughs> right now for me. Hair was tinfoiled up at one point as she got it dyed. <laughs> still has that sort of spicy and floral heat in the background but it's really softened up with time in the glass mm -hmm. it's almost like a different whiskey completely mm -hmm. oh man the palette has stuck together though that combination of uh like Apple pie with like brown sugar crumbled on top. Uh, a bit of nuttiness on the finish and just this light spicy peat in the background. That is awesome. So what you're saying is instead of apple pie, it's an apple crumble or apple crisp mm -hmm. with those like kind of fatty brown sugar and butter. Yeah, cooked butter. Campfire. Totally. That's a good call. Yeah. And and you grilled some mushrooms right before on the same pan. <laughs> yeah, it, it really it does have that kind of like that. That earthy. miso umami. Yeah. Yeah. Old lady with the twist. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, that's brilliant. Uh uh I I, I think it, it you got it. Yeah, the perm note should be in the tasting notes as well, though, in my opinion. It's it's all over the map and I can't unsmell it now, personally. So that's why I'm trying to, to inflict that on the rest of you as well. <laughs> it's so funny. So first she started out her day, like fresh and floral. She sprayed the, the perfume on. She went and did some errands. Then she went and got hair did. Now yeah. she's at home and she's baking a pie and friends are coming that's right. over. She stoked the fire with some wood. <laughs> yeah. She she uh, she skipped the polished shoes and polished pews and, and didn't go to church that day just so she no. could get her her full day in though at the, the hairdressers. Yeah. It's a me day whiskey. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, I don't know if I, I, there's bits and pieces of this uh, that I think I could pick the distillery out from, but it'd be tough. Guesses, experience yeah. panel of people. You guys want to guess on this one? Yeah, let's hear some guesses because I, I love when people guess and then when they're right, it's so exciting. That's right. <laughs> Even for me, I'm just a spectator. It's great. So uh, uh, this will, here's a few hints for you. Uh, and this will probably uh, <laughs> give it away for some people. Uh, Arden of Freud is, uh, is Chris Walker. Uh, Chris Walker's guess. Um, 
you are not far off stylistically, I will say on that one. Um, so uh, this shares uh, DNA with some past uh, SMWS bottlings. Uh, it is the same juice that was in uh, four, well, I just gave it away, shit. But uh, it was No Vikings Need Apply and By the Beautiful Sea and Sooty Meringue were uh, previous bottlings from this distillery. Some of you guys might have those on your shelves, I'm not sure. Uh, Tyler got it, and uh, I did start to say four there, which was my fault, but uh, it is Highland Park, uh, thanks to the Viking note there. Uh, typically, and I didn't look at the tasting notes on the society's bottle, uh, on the society's notes here, usually they, they can't get away from saying Orkney somewhere on there, or Heather, uh, which are usually the biggest hints that it's going to be Highland Park. Maybe I'll take a look as I'm sharing the screen and see if that's in the uh, society's tasting notes here. So this is 4.312, uh, old school with the twist from <laughs> Highland Park Distillery, 13 years old, uh, 189.99 uh, for this bottle. And uh, society's notes, let's see, flaming orange peel, uh, rubbing the rim of a smoked orange, old fashioned, that totally makes sense there. Spanish touched scallops, smoky chorizo. I don't think they said Heather or Orkney in here. They did say miso soup though, uh, which is very cool. <laughs> so they didn't give it away on this one, which is shocking because they do uh, a lot of the time in the notes for them, the society here. Uh, I like those other bottles. The palette on this one though is just utterly fantastic. Uh, uh, I really enjoy this one. And that, I poured a little bit more in my glass uh, since I was out of the last, uh, but uh, that miso note's coming through again for me in a, in a big way. Very cool dram. <laughs> it tastes like an HP ripoff. <laughs> yeah. No, this is the, this is the true HP, HP sauce there, Michael. That's it's not my a, nickname. Yeah. Oh, totally. Never... That's HP sauce. That totally makes sense. We got to start calling you that at work. I used to work in a kitchen and my initials are HP, so he's calling me HP sauce all the time. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tyler said, if in doubt, guess Kalila. Uh, that's, uh, that's a good call. It does have those, those sort of like salty, briny, oily notes to it as well that Kalila always gets. But not um, overly lemon. And no, I find like it's Kalila missing the citrus. Has that yeah. like lemon kind of note to it oh yeah, totally and there's been so many from the society lately that have been like full-blown uh the the salted rim on a lime margarita like a shaken lime okay. margarita for me oh. lately yeah okay back to uh the the whiskey of the night though so let's uh go back to whiskey number five and let's try a marmalade uh matured mm. cognac again this is so uh, delicious as we're doing that here is the link for the last bottle of the highland park I, yeah, could I can't nose, wait to nose this one again. I could nose marmalade matured cognac forever. They should make this like an air freshener for oh, totally. just like a plug-in. That'd be a great name for an air freshener too, is marmalade matured cognac. And I am uh, rather new to cognacs. I tried two last night. I've yep. tried young, young cognac, and it's like, yeah, I'm not a yeah. rapper. I don't need it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, once older, you get past the henny and into the good stuff, it's uh, it changes the game. Well, my favorite cognac of all time was uh, Hardy's Lot 70. Oh, man. Yeah. Some of the Hardy's bottles, they're so <sighs> fruity in style. They're cool. Oh, it was amazing. And then I was like, yeah. how much is it? $300? I'll buy three bottles of scotch, please. Yeah. Um, but now when I try cognac, it's I'm, you can get incredibly aged stuff for very good value. And and mm -hmm. I discovered that uh, yesterday and I'm really looking forward to that old and rare spirits uh, yeah. tasting now with that 1928 yeah. cognac. Um, but this is like reminiscent of cognac, but yeah. I know that the you know what it is? part of it is barley. Yeah, it's it's cognac meets amaretto for me right now on the nose where you get that sort of like uh uh 
that the apricot pit note with it as well. Um, okay. Andrew says he wants this for his in car scent. Uh, <laughs> You would be breathalyzed so often, Andrew, it's not even funny, uh, if this was your car smell. I broke a bottle of scotch in my car once, like it just fell out of the box and rolled. (laughs) (laughs) I, from that moment on, kept a stash of business cards in my cigar lighter box in case I ever got pulled over. It's like, it's business. Yeah, that's what, no seriously, officer. Yeah, it's just what my car smells like. Yeah, I'm in industry. Uh, and not a bartender like I <laughs> mm. yeah the nose on this is fantastic uh I'm getting more a bit more of that like uh the the just uh like the smoke from the match now on yeah. the nose as you cut through that apple still like that mm-hmm. to me like that apple juice is just yeah ritzing out of there mm. Such a good palate too. I need it's more. Just like so concentrated and and just so bursting right up front. Yeah. Um, drying, but again, not too drying. Like it's not overly tannic or bitter. It mm-hmm. still has some really nice spicy notes in there. Um, that is a cool dram. I I think uh, it would be really cool to try something like this in a before and after they they did the cask finish. Yeah. Um, but the the cast finish on this one definitely did not ruin it uh, uh and i would i'm guessing it actually benefited from it a lot because I, I really like how it ended up okay so there are uh a few distilleries that uh, uh long time smws uh, members are probably fond of uh there's one that we always talk about as being sort of a chameleon and taking to almost whatever cask you throw at it. And that is this distillery here. I'll share the uh, the bottle uh, shot and the website uh, with you right now. So this is from Scotch Malt Whiskey Society 35.310. That means this uh, distillery number 35 is Glen Murray. Um, okay. uh, fantastic distillery. Not a lot of official bottling from them and and frankly, relatively disappointing official bottlings in a lot of the cases. Uh, but we've had lots of Glen Murray from the SMWS over the year, years in so many different casks, it's it's crazy. Um, I've had Glen Murray from the society that was soft and luscious and and from refill casks and just beautiful and waxy and fruity in style. I've had... Uh, uh, Glen Murray from the society that could have been a bourbon where it was done in a toasted oak barrel and so rich and coconutty in style that it was fantastic. Uh, I think there was a bottle called to infinity and beyond in that style years ago. That was just utterly fantastic for me. Um, they've done X saw turn casts. I've done X white wine casts and Chardonnay and Shannon Blanc casts that were great as well. Um, but Glen Murray, no matter what cask you throw at it, tends to make a, a great, great whiskey, especially as a single cask. And this is uh, uh, yet another one in the uh, in the lineup. We haven't had as many Sherry Glen Murray lately, and and this one was uh, uh, quite a good Glen Murray for style. Uh, it is 20 years old. Uh, you are pairing a bit more for it because of that is 271.99. But good grief, this is a gorgeous whiskey. Okay, so link for that guy before we go on to the next one is uh, just arriving now in the chat. And with that, let's go on to Pete's sake, uh, for Pete's sake. I, I'm wondering if this one has stood the test of time because, uh, oh yes, it has. Uh, I, I think this is still gonna yeah. end up my favorite of the night. I'm getting like a baked potato with like all the fixings on this. Yeah. Oh man, that's a good call. Like sour cream, green onions, Chad, bacon bits. Bacon bits. Yeah. Oh, cool. Totally. You know what it is? This is in a this is a, a baked potato uh in a steak restaurant in the 80s where you could still smoke in the restaurant. <laughs> and there's like an ashtray with stubbed out cigarettes right next to it. This is my Irish roots are loving this. Yeah. Potato. But it still has it has that steak note uh of uh yeah. The, the next one uh, in the, the in the lineup too right now with that that is a good call 
They, they should have called this one twice baked potato. <laughs> I don't know. If We've got alternate names well. all over the place on this, on this lineup. I, I don't know if twi twice baked potato would have uh, as well of a review as for Pete's sake though. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Like, Oh, all the pedophiles in the room, like myself would, would buy that. I mean, I love potatoes. Um, so uh, note about myself. Um, you talk about the shape of women and the type of body shape that they have. Are they pears? Are they hourglasses? I've always described myself as potato. <laughs> because I don't conform and I love potatoes. People yeah. said, if you could come back as something in life, what would you be? I said potato. And that's terribly dull and yeah. uninteresting but i i won't believe you until i won't believe you until we can connect uh, some jumper cables to your two fingers and we can power an alarm clock with it that's that's the only way i believe you i would try that yeah yeah for science oh that oh it's so the cool. nose and the palate on this one just is like uh it must just be this is what I'm craving right now in in a scotch because uh, it is definitely in my wheelhouse. So can we talk about the Woodstock note? Because I watched a documentary about Woodstock and it was sad. Uh, I think that was Woodstock uh, like 2005 that you're talking about, though. <laughs> yeah. Not that I mean, there there was a lot of sad stuff about the 69 Woodstock and probably the 99 Woodstock as well. But uh, the peace and love thing at least lived through the 69 one, the, the Red Hot Chili Peppers playing fire while everybody rioted of the, of the last Woodstock probably ruined it for a lot of people, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but this is really pretty. You still get some nice citrus notes behind all that uh, smoke and fire in here. Yeah. Uh, Tyler's saying, you mean scotch doesn't remind you of a specific five minutes of, the, of your life? Uh, for me, it does, uh, but it's this five minutes that I'm living now, typically in tastings. So, yeah, I'm all, and yeah, it's usually different five minute periods all crammed together in one dram. Yeah, that's right. Which is why sometimes it's hard to pick a tasting note. Yeah, that's uh, every every Scotch whiskey is synesthesia is, is what it comes down to. The palate has changed dramatically on this for me. Mm hmm. So cool. I agree. It, it's softened up quite a bit, and it's actually got, although it's not as big as some other whiskeys from this distillery, but it's going into that smoky, wet cardboard note that is a uh, almost a giveaway for this specific distillery for me. That's so funny because uh, Andrew and Kurt always seem to reference wet cardboard, and I just say, "How sad is your life that you don't? Yep. You can't store things without it getting wet." In that's right the box it's stored in it's just see awesome. and to me that's still i love this distillery uh and this is uh this uh this is not a, a bad note on it when it gets that note for me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but i would rather like wet pulp than yeah. wet cardboard yeah this is like a, a so, okay some wet pulp mashed together with like a uh like a like a, a green salsa, I'd say right now on the nose for me. Nailed it. I'm trying to get a recipe from Mexico. We went to a, a mm -hmm. grilling restaurant called the Grilling Bastards. And the, the chef there has been a smoker expert for 18 years. Nice. Grilling and smoking. And we had to make our own three course dinner using smokers, fire and char. And we made these incredible pulled pork uh, tacos. Nice. And I tried to make them and it's not the same. And I know it's because they did something behind the scenes with my sauce. <laughs> um, and the peppers are different. I can't tell if they were green peppers or green tomatoes. So I reached out to them uh, the other day and said, I, I need the recipe and I'm willing yeah. to trade scotch for the secret. Nice. Um, so I'm, I'm waiting to hear back, but, uh, Evan, when I do, I'm going to make the store some nice authentic style Mexican tacos. That's um, awesome. But when you said that, that's what it reminded me of was this green sauce, the salsa sauce. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. It still has a little bit of that, that's, uh, 
it's even slightly cooling and minty on the nose right now, but it's, it's yeah. got a little bit of jalapeno in there as well. Yeah. The cooling mm. is a great note. Yeah. Okay. I'll, uh, we've teased this one a little bit. I'm just going to share my screen. Uh, this is from Loch Lomond Distillery, but it is uh, from even for Loch Lomond Distillery, one of their weirder styles uh, uh, that uh, we're getting tonight. The, this is Scotch Malt Whiskey Society G15.14, G15.14. That is means that technically, based on the SWA standards, this is a grain whiskey. Although uh, this is a grain mint whiskey that is 100% heated malted barley that was uh, ran through a continuous still instead of a pot still at Loch Lomond Distillery. Uh, this is only eight years old. It's from the 13th of May, 2013, and it is $140. Wow, that's delicious. Yeah, uh, this is just utterly fantastic. And and again, probably just because it's right in my wheelhouse, I'm, I'm probably uh, uh, giving this one a bit more weight than other people do, but man, I'm loving this one. Mm. Okay, last but not least, the cheesiest dram of the night for us uh, was Fortune Favors the Brave, at least on the nose. Let's see if it's still all Dairy Farm mm. and Dairy Barn. It's there. Softer, but there. And while we're trying that one, here is the link for the last one. Yeah, I'm looking forward to trying this one again. This is uh, one of the distillery numbers where when I see the, the list of what's being poured for an outturn, I, I stand up and take notice just because uh, this is a, a distillery that's really become near and dear to me over the last couple of years. I think it's become near and dear to a lot of people, honestly. Oh, this is so good. Yeah, this is like oh. uh, like the Brook Lottie cheese on steroids. Uh, right yeah. now on the nose. Oh, I love it's uh it's like you're in a warehouse drinking. Yeah. It's got that like kind of slightly dun age rustic multi yeah. style that yeah. you want every scotch to have in its own way. Like yeah. you know that they can't all have it, but you want it. And when you drink it, you're like, this is scotch. Yeah. I know it's scotch. There's no question. It's the nose is the nose is like you've got some like someone brought in some food to have with it. There's maybe some olives around and stuff for other people that like olives uh, and, and a little bit of charcuterie. But then there's also like specifically Beamster cheese and uh, Comte uh, cheese on the on the uh, the cutting board next to everything else. And those uh, those raincoats, like have super hard crackers uh, on there as well. Cool. Andrew McKay says the barns at Stampede. Totally agree. They're, that that yeah. it's like you're just like someone is mucking out the barn uh, as well, right next to it. This is uh, this is the smell like. Uh, um, so uh, my in-laws, my, my wife's parents live in a small town named Duchess, Alberta. And Duchess, Alberta is about a half hour's drive to, uh, from Brooks, Alberta. And this is, you go into Brooks, Alberta and you smell this uh, because it, the meat packing plant is right there, uh, which means there's a ton of farms in the area and a, a ton of beef being processed. Um, and uh, this is, this is the smell of Brooks <laughs> on the nose, but uh, I'd rather be nosing this glass than smelling Brooks, honestly, most of the time. Yeah, this is like my childhood. Yeah. Growing up. But so we grew up on a cattle farm on one side and a hay farm on the other. And in the middle mm -hmm. was a, like a swamp that I remember a cow drowning in. I was like four years old. Oof. And I remember my parents going, don't go outside because we have to pull the cow out of the swamp. Yep. Um, but I also remember my brother trying to catch a pig <laughs> and he wouldn't let go of the rope once he caught it and getting like dragged through the mud. <laughs> oh, man. So 
Okay, so this I'm gonna remind me of the the donkey story after this because I've got to tell that based on the story you just gave. But I, I don't want to get too sidetracked. I want to reveal this and then I'll tell that because uh, it's apropos since Easter is coming up. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm gonna share share my screen before I get too sidetracked here. Uh, so this uh, mm. the distillery that I was talking about for this one. This is Glen Scotia, uh, Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, ninety three dot one seven four uh again eight years old just a little, like the Loch Lomond and like Loch, the Loch Lomond this is actually owned by the same company uh Loch Lomond group uh owns both Loch Lomond distillery and Glen Scotia distillery and man have they been doing fantastic things with both over the last decade or so um both uh for official ballings and for independent ballings have just been absolutely killing it over the last decade, in my opinion. Um, uh, their quality is top notch. Loch Lomond is finally getting its due for the wide range of whiskeys that it creates and rightfully slow. So, and Glen Scotia, even though Springbank gets all the love in Campbelltown, uh, people are starting to pay more attention to it as well. And there's a, there's a great gentleman there. I think his name is, uh, is it Ian McMillan? uh is in charge of uh, Glen Scotia distillery and has been for the last eight years or so and he has uh uh really sort of upped their game and and given them more of the profile they deserve because it is a fantastic distillery in its own right uh 150 bucks for this eight-year-old but uh well well worth it in my opinion uh just another very very cool dram from Glen Scotia and Campbelltown so that is, uh, sorry, Harmony, you're muted. I was going to say 149 bucks is great value, but it doesn't quite get me my membership. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll have to talk on that one. That's for sure. Which means Maybe, I, can I convince you or can I, can I uh, interest you in a marmalade uh, matured cognac perhaps? You can, which is surprising because I'm, I've said this many times. I love ex-bourbon virgin oak classic mm -hmm. style whiskeys i just adore yeah. them Same but, here. yeah you could you could probably yeah. talk me into oh that's my, uh maybe marmalade we'll matured three. cognac was so so good i'm i'm right there with you i tend to like the uh refill and ex bourbon side of things right now especially but uh yeah marmalade matured cognac i think oh it's tough it, it i think it's my second favorite of the night though yeah, I had them all like spaced forward and back based on how I like them, but then I realized mm -hmm. it wasn't good for photo. So I realigned them and I don't know where I, I can't <laughs> remember where I stand. I haven't eaten since breakfast and now I've had multiple pours yeah. of cast drink scotch. I remember them all fondly. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're it sounds like you're 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 like just uh ready to pull the trigger on a super greasy meal from DoorDash or something. It's seeming like a Big Mac kind of evening. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> well, that's, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the lineup as well. Uh, I am, uh, man, we've had a, such a good 2023 so far, three months in with the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. Uh, some great out turns. I think this is right up there as well. I, ha I had some questions on the number two and three when I first tried them. Uh, and put the lineup together but i'm so happy with how everything showed personally i hope you guys enjoyed them as well um harmony thank you for joining me i'm going to end on uh on that story uh and then i've got to run but uh harmony had mentioned uh, a cow getting stuck in the in the uh in the mud and i've never been uh, a farm guy i've uh, i grew up in a small town and i grew up around dairy farms that's why that note really sticks out for me uh, mm -hmm. in the boonies uh, of, of Creston, BC, where I, I used to be able to like do a 15 minute bike ride and cross the border into Idaho. We were so close to the border. Uh, pre 9-11, of course, I don't think I could bike across the border now, especially not without a passport. But uh, man, uh, the uh, uh, my wife's family uh, lives on a farm that's been generational at this point. Uh, uh, started with uh, her grandparents and then her parents living in it. And now her uh, brother, my brother-in-law, uh, owns the family land there and lives on the farm and operates it. But uh, 
years ago we were down there for Easter and their donkey, which was there to help uh, uh, protect the cows and protect, uh, well, sorry, not the cows, but the sheep that they, that they had at the time because they are vicious kickers, if, uh, if you know anything about donkeys, um, got stuck uh, down in the gully in some mud uh, at the beginning of Easter and they could not get this donkey out. Uh, it was assumed it was going to perish and pass away and it wasn't moving for a long while. And then uh, on Easter Sunday, um, it started moving again and got out. And it was, uh, we joked that it was like Jesus had risen. Uh, so now that uh, that donkey, although it did pass away later on, I believe, uh, it became known as Jesus. Um and uh, uh, is fondly remembered by the family because of uh, the hard work that it did uh, in suffering for all of our sins uh, uh, and, and then rising again on Easter. Um, but that's my story. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the tasting and hopefully we'll see you uh, after Easter for the, uh, the April tasting. I think we have Easter in March this year. Um, so thank you. Uh, and uh, thank you for joining us and we'll see you all soon. Take care and thank you, Harmony. Thanks, Evan. Have a great night, everyone. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Take care. <laughs>